and welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is still dark and it is really early. Um, it is Thursday, January 5th. And boy, did we have some fun things to talk about today. This morning, we're going to discuss the following uh, what the Fed said yesterday to blow up this market. You can see these giant red candles in the background. Bitcoin's we're going to discuss Bitcoin's break of the range, uh, which we've been following and waiting for patiently, and uh, Bitcoin underlying market dynamics, how that's going to affect you know Bitcoin's price action. And we're going to cover a few of our favorite altcoins like Matic, Luna, and Avalanche. Um, and so we're going to take a look at traditional markets as well and the dollar and how that affects Bitcoin's price. So Let's jump right into it and take a look at what the Fed said yesterday. And that's good old Mr. Powell. Uh, he must have a, you know, hard job. I say pray for Powell. So somebody asked, a, uh, asked me a great question and um, he said, you know, how long do you expect the Bitcoin correction to last given tapering starts in March? And, you know, would it be bad for Bitcoin to remain corrective in Q1? And, you know, when you talk about news events like this, it really made me think and, you know, think a little deeper. And basically, when you have the information right in front of you, in front of your face, right? We had the Fed minutes yesterday and, uh, you know, I'll just put that in the background, but they said what they're talking about yesterday, they're... They're talking about a more aggressive taper. They're talking about reducing their balance sheet. And they're talking about having some rate hikes, essentially just sucking some of the liquidity out of the market, right? It's called quantitative tightening. And uh, that was all expected to start around the end of Q1, uh, beginning of Q2. But now that all this has just really been solidified with more certainty by the Fed, with yesterday's statement, you're going to see these things get priced in essentially right now. So I would actually be saying that closer to the date where these events start to take place or when they postulate that these things are happening, you'll probably see the lows, you know, uh, put in before then. And that's typically the way the market works, right? In a sense, uh, that's what the market is well, in, right now, the market's going to be quite volatile for a bit of time. And then what typically happens, the lows will be found as we begin to have a lot more certainty alongside the event, right? And by that time, the event happens, you're probably going to see an opposite move in the market. And that's, you know, I think a lot of people will be looking around that time. So it'll be opposite of what I think a lot of people will be looking for at that time. So I think personally, this is just my opinion after, you know, doing some research and well, watching these events play out since 2008 over the last 14 years, I've been, you know, watching these markets. Um, yep. The market always does what the least amount of people expect. And I mean, that's just a theory, but, um, We'll be following these events and these narratives closely over the next few months. And more importantly, you know, this will, we're going to talk about how this is going to affect Bitcoin's price and the altcoins as well. And with this, uh, with that said, if you enjoy the content here and I just say, make sure you throw down a like on this video so we can get this out to a few more people. Um, I would appreciate that. So let's jump right into Bitcoin's price action here uh, in the background and um, talk about some of the underlying market dynamics. Um, and the first thing I wanted to go ahead and bring up and why I bring this up every day um, and harp on it so much is that, well, one, you know, we talked about open interest, which is about $13.38 billion. Today, we were at 12.62 billion. So 
you know, something to know, whenever open interest has been over $12 billion, it's resulted in a rather uh, big move down. Um, so that's just something to note. Global leverage is at 0.22%, still at all-time highs. So we want both of these numbers to come down to see, like, the macro low put in. So what it does tell me is, you know, I don't think the downside move is over yet. However, we probably get a small bounce here. Um, the other thing I want to bring up is our fear and greed index, which is at a 15. So we're in this extremely fearful zone. And what we have been saying is, look, we want it to come down, you know, probably around a 10, uh, somewhere in this region, very similar to what we saw back in July. And just keep that in the back of your head. Um, and so, you know, I don't think the lows have been put in yet, but when we do th see these things happen, It'll just give us another edge to know, hey, maybe the macro lows in. But we want to see uh, a massive liquidation event, right? The global leverage, we want it to get washed out. So maybe go all the way back down to, you know, 10% or 0.1%. Um, but this move is going to, you know, probably be over relatively soon. Um, but back on the Bitcoin's price action, and what we've been discussing just over the past few weeks, months, um, back Bitcoin on the daily, we were talking about this range, uh, 45.5 to the downside and 52,000 to the upside. And we said any kind of a daily break below there was going to result in a pretty decent move and more aggressive traders would take it on a four hour closure. And uh, that happened yesterday. Um, so we are getting a little bit of a bounce off of our first uh, marked off territory and that's a wick fill and we had talked about that over the past few weeks saying hey very very likely we kind of fill in the wick here uh, very similarly to what we saw uh, back in summertime last year so we had this huge wick down here and then we came and filled it in a few times um, as you can see that played out over a few months but uh, let's just jump back into, um, yeah, you know, I'm basically looking for a bounce from this region. Um, if we pull up Bitcoin on the CMEs here and the symbol for Bitcoin CMEs, that's the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the futures exchange, it is BTC one exclamation. Um, and we're coming right in contact. So, so let's take a look at it on a weekly because that's, you know, what a lot of more people are interested in is they're not interested in day trading. They're interested in what's the trend going to be over the next few months or weeks. And um, so we're hitting the trend line and we did say this is a great risk reward opportunity. Why? Because, well, Bitcoin has a history of bouncing off the green 55 day exponential moving average. Additionally, uh, we don't believe that we're in a downtrend or a macro downtrend. We believe we're going to be an uptrend. And so that means we're not going to close a weekly low below, um, you know, $40,000, right? So um, why would that be a good entry point in my opinion or somewhere, you know, in this region? Possibly because, well, if... My trading strategy says the point of failure is, you know, at 38,000 or 37,000, then I know exactly how much risk I have on the table and I know when to get out of the trade. And for me, that's very minimal risk with significant upside bounce potential, um, in my opinion. But we'll just uh, dial that back for a second and... There's a few other things I wanted to point out. And uh, yeah, so again, we're hitting that weekly trend line. These are some pretty, you know, bold statements. Um, question is, where does the narrative fall apart? How do we know the dump is, you know, going to continue? And uh, there is something I like to keep a very, very keen eye on. And it is called the, um, it's very, very important indicator. It's called the hash ribbons indicator. Um, and I'm just going to pull this up. Okay, so we got our hash ribbons indicator, and we want to put this on the daily time frame. 
And uh, basically, uh, what, what you'll see down here, well, is this indicator that called the hash ribbons indicator, which um, let's take off a few things here, make it a little more easy to see. No, it's not on there. Okay, at any rate, you are gonna have to, let's see, I'll take that off and boom. Okay, so what is the hash ribbons indicator? Don't ask me exactly how they measure the hash rate, but if you go back and back test it, uh, what the hash indicator, the hash ribbons indicator says is that once you get a blue buy signal, you will never go back and break the last daily high or low, which is coming in. You can see we got this signal right around August 7th of this year, and uh, and the last daily higher low coming in at call it 37,480 or 37,000 if you want to use a round number. So the only time this indicator has ever failed was one time and that was back in coronavirus dump time, which I believe is right here. So that's Jan January 20 and yeah, March of 20, we had the dump and we broke the last daily higher low, but you can go back and test it. It's never broke. And what what I'm gonna do is include a link in the description uh, where I go over this indicator in a little more detail um, and how we talked about it back in March. We were t talking about it. We were waiting for the blue buy signal to get confirmation that, hey, we're gonna be in a macro uptrend and um and well it it worked out pretty nice um so do i think we get a bounce at forty thousand? yes um you know i do think could we swipe thirty seven thousand somewhere in this do we get a bounce and i'm gonna put back on my primary chart over here i do think so i do think so could I be wrong? Absolutely. But, um, you know, I don't think there's going to be any daily closures below 37,000. And if there is, for me, I know that's time to get on the other side of the trade. That's the beauty of trading. Okay, what else is important that I wanted to bring up today uh, is traditional markets traditional markets now i know <clears throat> i know it's against traditional belief because most people want bitcoin to be a hedge against the stock market and um you know this is why we follow the stock market it's a risk asset the nasdaq re represents the financial sector and the tech sector and when liquidity gets sucked out of the market, risk assets take a hit. And really NASDAQ tipped me off yesterday. It was leading the party. It really started to dump yesterday. And I had a, you know, that was my first, you know, uh, uh, one of my first inclinations. Needless to say, do we get a weekly bounce here on the NASDAQ? Very, very likely we get a bounce on the weekly time frame which if you put on a weekly, that's probably going to be right around your yellow 21, right? Do we get a bounce there? Yes. But is this going to be a top for a while? Probably, yes. So if NASDAQ gets a bounce here, does Bitcoin probably get a bounce? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's take a look at NASDAQ on the monthly. NASDAQ on the monthly. Help me out, internet. Come on. Anyways, uh, NASDAQ on the monthly, you can see any kind of a tick below last month's low end, you know, we're coming down to 15,230. Um, so I'd be keeping a close eye on that. Yeah, it looks like some pretty intense selling and that looks like a top, right? And <laughs> okay. So 
again, we want to keep an eye on traditional markets alongside of other markets to see how it affects Bitcoin. But again, you know, Fed sucking liquidity out of the market, bad. Um, what else do we want to look at? We want to look at the dollar, which is currently... And what we've been saying about the dollar is, look, if the dollar starts to rally here, which it is in a, in a macro uptrend, um, that's bad for stocks and bad for Bitcoin, bad for risk on assets. Because that was my point there is Bitcoin is highly correlated with the stock market and has been since 2012, highly, highly correlated. That's just been the facts. So uh, until that changes, right, we expect more of the same. We did have a divergence a couple of months, but that lasted for just a quick, you know, second. Um, but, you know, so dollar strength, bad for risk on assets. And that's exactly what we have here. And then what we talked about on the daily was, you know, we don't want to see the dollar break above 96 because it's probably heading up towards, you know, towards a dollar. What do you know? The dollar might be worth a dollar or 98 cents. And that, that could be pretty, uh, you would think that's good, but dollar strength is not good for risk on assets. If you, frankly, if you want your assets to go up in value, you don't want dollar strength, right? You don't want deflation regardless, regardless of this dollar, um, price action, um, which I, I would expect based on the weekly, for the dollar, it hit that target, and the next target's up at a buck, right? Or a hundred, or whatever you want to call that. And that is, yeah, right back at your last kind of macro high level there. So let's see. How that, and, and the dollar moves really slow. So that could take, you know, a few months or a year, um, you know. And where does it start to get destroyed? And what we want to happen is for that to just come down, you know, we could come down all the way here, right? Back to the green 55 and then fill it back up like that. And that would be great for Bitcoin, great for risk assets. We get another quarter of, you know, party on in the markets. Um, but ultimately, I think we all know the fate of the dollar, right? It might go back up to a dollar, but ultimately uh, we know the fate of the dollar. Um, and um, so macro bullish on Bitcoin, macro bullish on Bitcoin. What does that mean? Um, on the higher term time frames, like a monthly, right? Uh, monthly, you are still making higher highs and higher lows. Um, you know, could could it wake down all the way down to thirty seven thousand, like I've been talking about? Sure, why not? Um, get a big bounce there and pick it on up for new all time highs. That would be great. And just you know, something to note is that typically does happen is your last wick low um, kind of gets filled in over time. But anyways, that's just an odd side note. Um, so even with this pullback, you know, still macro bullish, as uh, long as, you know, we're trading above $30,000 on a monthly time frame, which, you know, that's way down there. And so that's good news. And that's, you know, the outlook. We're talking long term, you know, year to two years. Uh, but right now, it's time to be a little bit more on the defensive. So where would I pr call this price correction over back above? Let's see here on the daily. I'll throw back on. Yeah, back above 52,000 on spot price. And better yet, on CMEs, I would call the correction over. Um, and um, so that that should be exciting news. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, and, you know, what do I think is likely to happen? Something that we saw, you know, over the summer. Again, you know, we had all these wicks down here and it just took a little time to fill it out. So could this, you know, do something like that and come come down here and, you know, do something like that and then go up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all relative. As long as we don't get any weekly or dailies below 30, you know, daily below 37 and weekly below 40,000, we are good to go. Um, if we do close a weekly back below 40,000, 
or 37,000, the wick low, um, you know, and, and, and again, this, this is probably more likely, you know, we kind of have another fill of this wick here, scare everybody again, fear and greed gets down to a 10, right? We maybe put in some kind of a lower high or something on a daily time frame, and then, uh, and then it picks itself up. Hopefully, uh, right as the Fed, you know, everybody finally understands what the Fed is going to do and how it's going to affect the market. Um, okay. So that's kind of the bull case, right? Um, but the bear case would be this, right? Is if we close a weekly candle below 40,000 and make a new low, uh, so that would be our first lower low, and then lower high, and you know, if Bitcoin closes below 40,000, I mean, we destroy the hash ribbons indicator below 37,000, we're probably in another black swan type flu event, <laughs> but uh, back on to, you know, the daily time frame I wanted to point out again is our stochastics on the CMEs. Uh, actually, let's take a look at it on spot price action. So if our stochastics cross up here, that's our momentum indicator. That'll indicate that, you know, mo momentum is beginning to turn to the upside and, um, uh, what am I looking for? A basically a any kind of a closure. I think where where is it going to cross up? Where are we going to cross up? Yes, forty five thousand in my notes. So any kind of a daily closure back above forty five thousand. We're at forty two eight eighty eight. These will cross up, and that'll be an indicator. Hey, you know, probably going to get that bounce. That bounce is probably going to be around five to ten percent. So that would put us, you know, well, let's measure it out here. So from right here, that would put us back up to, yeah, exactly, 47,500, 43,000, which is just low enough to where it's just another lower high and uh, that, down, that downtrend would continue. Um, and that's probably coming in right at the 618 Fibonacci, which is your traditional area for rejection. Let's see if we can see this. So the 618 is right there. Yeah, at 45.5. Actually, yeah, the 7, that's your last point of failure on a bounce seven eight, at the 786. And, um, yeah, if we can get back above there, I mean, you know, we might... We, we might be head, heading back up to 52,000. That would be nice for a bounce. That would be kind of a bear trap, right? We start to, we get a four hour closure back above, call it 48,000. And um, yeah, I mean, that could be a bear trap just like we saw in the summertime. So we'll be keeping an eye out for that. Um, and I think it's very, very good to be aware of these areas. Additionally, uh, to keep in mind, that is our Bollinger Band indicator. Um, if you look at this thing on a daily time frame, when you are closing below the bottom side trolling your band, that is trend in motion. That means volatility is expanding. That means more continuation. As long as we're closing below the bottom side trolling your band, I would expect more of the same, more of the same. And, um, that is, but once you start to close back above the uh, the bottom side Trollinger band, right? Basically, the white line starts to show again, like right here, right? We're closing below. We're closing below. Oh, now we're above. That That's your first indicator that, hey, maybe a bounce is going to get put in. So just something to note there. Um, okay, so um, I'm out of breath. Let's hit a few altcoins on fire sale, maybe, or maybe not. Um, and, you know, 
I would just say don't buy these coins. Um, just We're just going over for fun, taking a look, taking a gander because a lot of this stuff is going to be volatile, so probably a better time to be watching, right? Uh, Ethereum, uh, let's start it off there. Ethereum, and we had a bit of an ascending trend line here, which we had drawn out like this. And we got rejected again. So right right at the edge there at the yellow 21. And that's just another lower high. And we're working on lower lows. We're closing below the bottom side trolling band. So, you know, as long as we're doing that on the daily, you could expect more of the same. However, do I think we get a bit of a bounce here right at this area we had marked off at 33 or 3,400? Uh, we did say that could be a potential good buying opportunity. And is it at the bottom side of this falling channel? Or did we just break it? No. How would we draw that out? Nope, that's not working out. So I'm going to just scratch that idea. But uh, what I would say <clears throat> is that here's the deal with the Ethereum. Ethereum is going to do what Bitcoin does probably, but more. And so if Bitcoin wants to swipe around 37 to 40,000, you know, um, I think uh, Ethereum could swipe, you know, somewhere between 29 to 2,800. Um, that's just reality. You know, they're going to follow each other. There's a bit of a neckline. And if we start to break this on a daily, that's not going to look good. And for a move down to 2,900, at least, um, but I think bounce first before anything, and we're probably just beginning to see that on the four hour, and NASDAQ still in the red today, but um, what else did I want to touch on Ethereum? Still overall, Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin, um, but you know, it outperforms it to the upside and outperforms it to the downside. And that's kind of the trade-off between the two. Um, okay, so where would I start to get bullish again on Ethereum with a daily closure back above 38.70? Um, until now, uh, it's, you know, trend on to the downside. And... <clears throat> Okay, what else did I want to go over? Let's see. And so, yeah, you know, we can get back, we can get bullish back above here. What what else? Is there any more hopium here? You know, weekly says down, you know, a bounce off of this 2800. I mean, Ethereum can bounce significantly as long as we don't close any weeklies below 30,000. We just don't want to revert the weekly trend. Remember, everything is still in a macro uptrend, um, and we will dial it in and know, you know, hey, here's where the trend reversal is, and there's always a bounce, right? So there's always the opportunity not to freak out and sell on the lows. So, um, you know, again, best to watch Bitcoin at this moment. Now, moving on, I want to move on to Luna. Luna on the weekly, tagging that nine exponential. That's perfectly fine. I am actually looking at for it to come all the way down there. Um, and uh, we did talk about Luna hitting about 70 bucks just over the past couple of days if certain conditions were met. One of them being a daily closure below uh, 80 bucks. And we did get that right there. Um, so that, that's playing out nicely. Okay, um, and yeah, so do we get a bit of a bounce here? This has been one of the stronger. Um, where would a bounce failure, you know, we just go to the breakdown point, put out a fib, and um, actually, I think this thing could tag down a bit more, but, you know, bounce failure around 82. So where can we get bullish again? Back on Luna. Depends on how aggressive you want to be, but, uh, you know, four hour above 87, or if you want to be a little more, um, conservative back above 93. Okay. What else do I want to take a look at? 
Uh, we had Matic, Matic, which we did say was target down 220 yesterday, and the green 55, we hit that. Is it good to be selling into the green 55? Typically, no. If Bitcoin gets a bounce, does this get a bounce? Yes. Bounce target probably back up to 240 um, over the next couple of days if the bullish divergence wants to play out. Um, and then, you know, really, um, we just don't want for that macro macro structure, the breakout target of about 3.30 to get hit, we, we've been talking about. We just don't want to see a weekly closure below this guy, the yellow 21. As long as we remain above there, uh, the macro trend's still in place. And again, that's why they say expect 80, 80 to 90% volatility in some of these assets. And that's why, you know, it's always going to be taking profits early and often uh, when you get your signal. So um, let's talk about, yeah, so let's see, what was the correction on this thing? 30%, so that's right in line with Bitcoin so far, uh, not too bad. Again, one of the stronger altcoins, the, the weaker altcoins got you know hit even more. Um, and last one I wanna to touch on, Avalanche, uh, because we have been following this one over the past few weeks. And what do we got here on Avalanche? Yeah, it looks like we're coming down to 80, 80 bucks. Um, any kind of a bounce there, as long as we don't close, you know, and revert that weekly trend. Again, there's the last weekly. Uh, do I think we get a bounce sooner than later? Probably. Uh, any kind of a closure, you know, I think daily closure. We can get a swipe down to 72 bucks. As long as we're above there, you know, we're fine. Uh, Avalanche, that has uh, been one of the stronger, but it has been weaker over the past few weeks. And um, yeah, as long as the weekly does not crack below $60, I think we'd be good for it now, which is, yeah, coming in, uh, I'd be more comfortable saying $80 actually. So should we get a bounce up to 100 bucks here first um, and then swipe lower alongside Bitcoin? Um, you know, that could happen pretty easily. But once you get a tick below the last weekly low, typically you're going to get a stroke down to that next target, which is at about 80 bucks. So let's keep a that that's going to wrap it up today. That was a lot today, guys. Bitcoin takes a bounce. Uh, some of the altcoins probably bounce along with it, I imagine. Um, and then if we put in that Additional lower high, and we swipe 37, 40,000. Some altcoins probably go on fire sale. And um, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Remember, we're not financial advisor. If you <laughs> advisors, so if you enjoyed our daily analysis, okay, I'm gonna have you cut again. Cut. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, we're not financial advisors. It's not financial advice. We're more like a Bitcoin coach here to explain to you some of the underlying market dynamics so you can come up for a strategy for yourself. If you enjoyed our daily analysis, click the subscribe button and get reminded of all the future daily videos we put out and all the other resources we drop um, also, if you're interested in learning about incorporating Bitcoin into your IRA, click on the link in the description below and you can get a free ebook today. Thanks and have a blessed day.